Hello there, audio listeners. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, video viewers. Welcome to the podcast as well. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. As I take a sip from my coffee, it's quite early here. It's the very beginning of the day. It is Friday the 30th of July, and here I am recording episode number 732 of Luke's English Podcast. And this episode, I'm not sure what it's called yet, but it's going to be a ramble, okay? Now, if you are a long-term listener to this podcast, you'll know what that means. A ramble is when I just kind of talk off the top of my head without any specific script, without any specific topic. It's basically just kind of me talking. And let's see how I can manage to keep going uh, just kind of improvising it all. Uh, I guess the first ever rambling episode was something like episode 700, not 700, episode 75, I think, was probably the first ever rambling episode. That was called the ice cream episode. And I thought to myself, I wonder if I can just talk without having anything planned. Can I just kind of talk for half an hour and see if I can keep going without stopping? That was my challenge in episode 75. And it turns out I was able to do it. It's quite nerve-wracking. I mean, you kind of feel like, oh, God, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a stupid mistake any second now. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, but that's all right. Um, So, yes, let me just put my headphones in here. So we have started. We have started. I'm just sipping from a cup of coffee just to make sure I'm... I'm fully awake. Are you awake too? Are you fully awake too? I should hope so, because you're now listening to this new episode of the podcast. Um, And yes, there's a video version of this as well as an audio version. Uh, You'll be able to see the video version on um, my YouTube channel or my website. And recently I have been doing YouTube videos. I've been sort of trying to make as much content that will also go on YouTube as possible. And often that means... um, adding something else on the screen so you're not just watching me talk but there's other stuff on the screen as well often like text you know vocabulary or a script or something there isn't any of that this time I would normally be putting up my notes or if there's a transcript my transcript on the screen so that you can see it too but there's no there are no notes there's no script there's nothing all I have is a few simple one word uh, cues to help me remember the basic things I'd like to talk about in this episode. So if you are watching on YouTube, I think it's just going to be my face. Sorry about that. But I expect that automatic subtitles will be available. So why not uh, check to see if they are available? And they are pretty accurate. I would say they're about 99% accurate, especially when it's just me on my own. When I'm just talking on my own doing a monologue like this, uh, Google's or YouTube's automatic transcriptions or subtitles seem to be a lot more accurate. So anyway, welcome. Welcome to my uh, apartment. Welcome to my flat. Welcome to this room where I record my episodes. Um, Yeah, the purpose of this episode really is for me to just talk directly from me to you. And I do these sometimes in order to kind of give news and just generally talk about various things that I haven't really had a chance to talk about um, recently. Now, if you are a regular listener to my podcast, you will remember that over the last couple of months, I've been saying that I've got a big backlog of episodes. Well, the backlog is nearly done. I've nearly got through all of them now. I've, I've got about three more episodes after this one that have already been recorded and ready to go and they'll be published soon but the backlog is nearly done but it's time for me to go on holiday pretty much so I suppose this is a this is one of those pre-holiday summer rambles that I do sometimes just before I go away on holiday and kind of maybe don't upload anything for a few weeks I do this sometimes so I'm just sort of checking in with you and sort of saying to you, okay, here's the situation. This is what's going on in my life. Here is some here's some news about the podcast and all that sort of thing. Mm. I have to say, at this point, um, at the beginning, I feel a bit overwhelmed by the prospect of doing this. That I'm am I really going to talk unscripted for for about an hour? Yes, I am. 
Okay, another thing, uh, video viewers, you might be thinking, Luke, where's your beard? What's happened to your beard? And that's <laughs> that's kind of, uh, for, for some reason, the video community, the video watching community are, obviously, because they've got video ver a video version, they're far more interested and invested in the way that I look. So <clears throat> what's my what does my haircut look like? Do I have hair on my face? And in the last, I guess the last few uploads, it's been sort of like beard, no beard, beard, no beard, half beard. Various states of uh, facial hair growth in recent uploads. But that's because the, the videos I've uploaded recently have been taken from different periods. So I've kind of like grabbed, um, I've got various bits of video footage of me recording the podcast and I use those to make some YouTube videos. And uh, some of them, in some of them I've got a beard and some of them I don't. But I suppose that's the thing that I, I'll let my beard grow, let it grow and probably let my hair grow a bit. And then I get fed up and I get a haircut and I shave my beard off and start again. So it's kind of like sometimes I've got a beard, sometimes I don't. Okay, that's not very important. But for some reason, the um, the video lepsters out there seem to be very interested and invested in whether or not there is hair pushing its way out of my chin or not, and to what extent I've let it happen. So anyway, there you go. I've got stubble. I've got stubble today, but not a full beard. Okay, stubble. That's the hair that is starting to grow out of your face. <clears throat> Before you have a beard, you have stubble, and then you afterwards you have a beard, and you can you shave the beard, you can shave it off, or you can trim the beard, meaning make it a bit um, make it a bit shorter. There you go. Beard vocabulary for everybody. Um, stubble, a beard, to trim, to shave off. Yes, there you go. Um, so how about you? How's your English going? How is your English? This is this these are these are my one word notes by the way. I've got YouTube, beard, English, moving, holiday, premium, football, OPP, um, daughter, and music. That's an overview of the stuff I'm gonna talk about. YouTube, I feel like I've done. I've said that this is on YouTube. There's no text on the screen, but there should be subtitles. Uh, beard, I've mentioned that. I've kind of explained that for all the, the facial hair uh, oriented lepsters out there in video land. Um, English is the next item on the list. And then moving, that's moving flat, because in the next couple of weeks, all of this around me is all going to have to come down and go somewhere else. Uh, holiday, where where I'm going and what I'm doing on my holiday. Oh, that's going to be exciting for you to hear. Um, and various other things. So English, how is your English? I think to to... I'll give you a very quick summary of sort of what I think at the moment. So I've always said that Luke's English podcast is best consumed as part of a balanced diet. So do you have a balanced diet in your English? Uh, part of that diet is you need lots of exposure to uh, authentic English, in my opinion. So you should listen and read a lot. And that's sort of learning by input. And then you that's not enough on its own. That's obviously very important. I was talking to Christian from Kangaroo English about this. That's obviously very important, but it's not the only thing, of course. How could it be? You can't just learn a language just from consuming it. You also need to be doing it too. So remember that English is something that you can do, not something that you know, okay? So always remember that it's English is a thing that you can do and focus on being able to do things and focus on practicing doing things. It's no good knowing all the rules of grammar, knowing a lot of vocabulary. You've got to use it too. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So practice, 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 practice. The five Ps. Um, what else? Some, um, some, some specific study as well, some focused study. Uh, they, it's called deliberate study. I saw a video of Christian's with, um, is his name Paul Mason? A guy who's been in the industry for decades and should know everything there is to know about learning English. And he talked about deliberate study and the importance of it. I suppose this is where you, instead of just sort of assuming that you're picking up or acquiring grammar and vocabulary from just listening to it and reading it, uh, deliberate study is where you go, you f do some focused study work in order to apply yourself and actually understand the language and understand how it works. And this is definitely worth doing 
it can really speed up the process if you do some grammar work or some vocab work. Not too much. It shouldn't be the first thing that you do, especially the grammar, but it's worth <clears throat> looking at various forms, understanding how the language fits together, and trying to just like maybe fix certain common mistakes which are um, the result of your first language. So some focused study is, is necessary. So input learning, uh, learning by doing, uh, focused study. I would also recommend um, <clears throat> doing pronunciation work as well. Listen and repeat drills, learning the, the phonemic alphabet and practicing and practicing again and again. Um, is there anything else? Fluency learning as well is important. You've got to learn how to put all of your words together and actually express yourself and speak uh, f without pausing too much. And that's also about confidence. You've got to activate the English that you've learnt. And there you go. That's kind of just a little... I don't know. Why did I say that? I guess it's because I asked you how your English was and I thought I'd give a little summary. There's obviously a lot more I could say about learning English and you can check out some of my other stuff uh, relating to that. Um, so anyway, I hope your English is going well. Listen regularly, but also try to do things regularly. Speaking, uh, other types of practice, write regularly um, and do do some focused pronunciation work. This year, I've spoken to um, six um, winners and runners-up from the WISPOLEP competition and they all had great English and really good things to say about learning English and I recommend that you go back and review those episodes because there was some really genuinely good advice in there including well I mean for example if we just pick out Michael from Poland he talked about using uh, a text online called comma get secure and working with the text um, practicing it again and again, listening to samples of other people reading it in different accents and working on it again and again and again. Um, okay, anyway, keep up your English. Now, let me talk uh, Let me talk now about moving. So I, I said before that all of this is going to have to go. So this is basically information which otherwise, normally I wouldn't really, I wouldn't tell you, I don't know if you'd be interested in it, but I'm telling you because it could affect the podcast. So you might know if you're a, if you're someone who listens to the end of each episode, I've kind of rambled a little bit about this uh, lately at the end of episodes, that we are moving to a new flat. We've actually bought our first flat together as a family, which is quite a big deal. And we've bought a place in Paris. We were wondering where to buy. Should we buy in Paris? Should we buy in the outskirts of Paris? Should we buy somewhere way outside Paris where it's much cheaper and you get a lot more space, but you're miles away you know um we were def we definitely wanted to buy somewhere in the paris area in france because we basically live here now my daughter's going to school here and also it would be difficult for my wife to move to england because of brexit frankly and you know we're, we're happy although i do miss the uk and so does my wife because she um she loves um the uk as well uh, but we're basically happy here. So anyway, to cut a long story short, we decided it was time to buy ourselves a place. But um, obviously it's very expensive in Paris, so the place that we're moving to is considerably smaller than the place that we've been living in for the, far, the past couple of years. Um, we're renting this place and it's got a fair amount of space. I mean, there's a room for, you know, there's a bedroom for my wife and me, there's a bedroom for my daughter, there's a nice living room kitchen. Uh, bathroom and stuff plus this room which is just up a little flight of stairs this room which we use for storage over there and for my pod room but we're moving okay so this could cause disruption I don't know how it's going to affect the podcast over the coming couple of months um, the story is that we're going to we're actually kind of demolishing um the apartment from the inside so all the walls inside the flat are not supporting walls so in houses or apartments you have supporting walls and non-supporting walls so all the walls inside this flat are not supporting walls you can knock them all down and the building will stay standing the ceiling's not going to collapse so that means that we can knock all those walls down and sort of redesign it rejig it so that it is a lot more practical so we're going to do that we're sort of making some changes we're opening out the kitchen 
We're going to add some storage because that's obviously very important and various other things. But we're going to have loads of work done, new kitchen, new bathroom. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a big project. And uh, so I don't know how long it's going to take. These things always take longer than expected. Then we've got to move all of our stuff. We've got, to, oh, we've got a lot of stuff to do. You know what it's like if you've moved house. You know how complicated that can be. So I don't know how that's going to affect the podcast. Good news is that as well as moving into a new flat, we've also managed to buy a little office space, which is not far away. It's like a couple of minutes on foot from the new apartment. So this little office space is a sort of about five, five and a half meters squared little room. And that's going to be my pod room. Um, so I should be getting access to that in September. So the podcast is going to move to its own separate space. It won't be in my apartment anymore. I'll go there every morning, a bit like a job, and that's where I'll podcast from. And I'll be having to, you know, decorate it and put my books up on the walls and guitars up. And I'm going to need to build a desk in there and stuff like that. It's it's quite an exciting time, but it's a disruptive time. So yes, I don't know what's going to happen to the podcast. Obviously, I will do my best to keep making episodes, and it's possible. I don't need to have a fixed location to do this. Um, so we will see but um there's a chance there'll be there'll be fewer episodes possibly even none it depends how it all goes um and how chaotic things are but there you go okay i'm moving to a new flat the move is going to sort of take place over the next couple of months as we get the, the work done the decoration work the actual moving the installing of everything moving into my new office, getting everything set up, getting an internet connection sorted out, all that stuff. Who knows? We'll see. But if I go quiet and there aren't any podcasts for a while, you'll know what's happening. Next word on my list is, is the word holiday. And um, so, yeah, so I'm, go I'm going on holiday like most normal humans. I am going on holiday this year and uh, we're going back to England. Now, this is a bit complicated. I mean, you know, it's a weird time for holidays, isn't it? A lot of people are doing staycations this year. Staycation. Do you know what a staycation is? Well, you know what a vacation is. That's where you go away for a while on holiday. A staycation is like a vacation, but you stay where you live. So you have a holiday at home, basically. A staycation. So lots of people in the UK and probably France too are doing staycations this year. Although in France they don't call them staycations, of course. But in the UK, the word is being used a lot. So people are, are staying in the UK, staying in the country uh, for their summer holidays. And so are people in France. And this means that many places are fully booked. Lots of places are completely fully booked. So it's been really hard to get a holiday. But we wanted to go back to England to see my parents so that my daughter can see her grandparents. So basically, we're doing that. We're going to go to England. There's a an annoying quarantining process I mean it's necessary I suppose that when you come from France you've got to quarantine for 10 days in the same location and you have to take certain tests you have to take a test a COVID test on day two and a COVID test on day eight and if you're okay then you're able to leave quarantine on day 10 but the weird thing is you can also do a day five test and if you do the day five test and it's and it's it's negative, then you can be released from quarantine early, which kind of makes me think, what's the point of day eight? Why doesn't everyone just do day two and day five? I don't know. And the other thing <clears throat> is that if you plan to do day five, you still need to buy day two and day eight. You can't just buy day two. You've got to buy day two and day eight. You, you need both tests to be confirmed as booked before you can travel. Uh, even if you plan to take a day five release from quarantine early test. And it, you know, the whole thing seems to be a bit of a scam where basically you're being forced to pay lots of money to, to buy tests which you might not even use. And where does all the money go? Well, in the UK at the moment, all the testing, all of this testing process is all being handled by private companies and they are charging £50 per test which is really expensive considering in France, for example, these tests have just been given out free uh, by the health service. So you've got to pay private firms 
about 50 pounds for tests that you don't even really need sometimes. But anyway, going back to the UK, so we're gonna have to do all the quarantining and testing and shoving things up our noses and this it's disgusting. Yeah, you gotta shove things up your nose to do the, the, the COVID test. Anyway, we're also gonna be going camping, which will be um, a bit of a gamble with the weather. Nice camping, I mean glamping, that's glamorous camping. We've had staycation, now we've got glamping. So we're going glamping. We're staying in a nice tent in a nice part of the country on a quite a fancy camping site that's a bit more like a festival or something. They have different events happening every day. There's like craft food trucks and craft beer and all sorts of different activities you can do. And the tents are quite luxurious. They're very comfortable. They have carpet on the floor. There, there are even electrical plug sockets in some of them. There are fire pits and barbecues and other cooking facilities. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do that for about five days, but only if the weather holds out. So it's never really a good situation to be, um, what's the word for it, sort of uh, relying entirely on the English weather for your enjoyment. But that's what we're going to do. I just hope it doesn't rain on us the entire time. There you go. That's holiday. Moving swiftly through my list of items. I don't know how long this is going to be. Um, normally my rambling content goes on forever because I can't finish making a point. But I'm doing okay. Maybe I've been improving. Maybe I've been working on my rambling and I've, I've managed to hone it. Or maybe it's because it's the morning. I don't know because it's kind of early in the morning. I, I, my brain still hasn't woken up. I don't know the reason. But I'm flying through the list quite quickly. Next in the list is Premium. And I just wanted to mention that Luke's English Podcast Premium, yes, I've been updating it as I do every month. And recently episodes I've uploaded are this, P30, which is a pronunciation video all about helping you to speak clearly with the right pausing, the right kind of emphasis to make you sound persuasive and fluent and engaging and interesting to listen to. So there's a, a, a lesson with lots of practice on using your voice and pausing in certain places to make yourself sound more engaging. That's P30. And then P31, parts one and two are, are now available. Part three might be available too. And this series is all about English used by my mum and me in our recent conversation about the Beatles or a book about the Beatles. And it includes lots of um, grammar for talking about the past, speculating about the past and talking about alternative pasts. So that's modal verbs and um, uh, third conditional structures, plus loads of vocabulary as well in the series uh, with all the pronunciation drills that you would normally expect. So just a heads up there for any premium lepsters. Uh, two new premium episodes or an episode and a series are available now in the in the app. And by the way, um, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, this podcast is primarily an audio podcast. I do videos sometimes as well, but it's primarily an audio podcast. And I've got, um, I mean, you can get Luke's English podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm assuming you know how to use podcasts. You just get your podcasting app and search for the name of the podcast that you're interested in and then subscribe. So Luke's English Podcast is available on iTunes, on Squadcast, oh, Squadcast? No. On Pocket Casts, on uh, Google Play and all the other things. But also I have an app and you can just search the app store for... Um, for, for it and it's called Luke's English Podcast app. Okay, and um, with Luke's English Podcast app, you get the entire episode archive on your phone. Every single episode I've ever done, including all of the premium content, all of the free content, and also there's a category um, here as well, which says um, app-only episodes, and that's full of episodes that are only available in the, in the app and nowhere else. Jingles and music. You can listen to samples of my jingles and little bits of music and stuff. Um, pronunciation drill videos, videos and plenty of other stuff. So check out the Luke's English Podcast app. It's completely free and you can use that also to access all that premium stuff. Okay, the next item on my list is football. And I feel I should probably mention the football, right? Um, I did two bonus episodes with uh, Martin and Zdenek about the Euros 
And England, of course, actually got to the final of Euro 2020 against Italy. And of course, you know, I, I live in France and of course, like loads of my French friends went, oh, uh, England are in the final. We know an English guy. Let's let's go and hang out with him and watch the game with him. And everyone wanted to sort of watch me watch the game. So we went to a pub with lot, quite a lot of us to watch it. And obviously I was chuffed that England scored early, but I was a little disappointed with the rest of our performance. We we were a little bit unimaginative and, and um, a bit defensive trying to protect our 1-0 lead. And Italy ground us down and finally equalised. And then, of course, it was a penalty shootout. And England are renowned for being a complete disaster at penalties. We always get knocked out of these international competitions on penalties. And sure enough, we did it again. Three of our guys failed to score and Italy went through. And it was obviously disappointing. But you know what? I wasn't that disappointed because I just felt like, well, this kind of disappointment is just normal, isn't it? It's just back to normal again. I didn't feel extra disappointed. I just felt like, all right, just back to the normal level of disappointment. So I was impressed with the team. I thought that we played well. We were a little unimaginative and conservative at times, but we did well. And obviously it's the best that we've done for decades. I like the manager, Gareth Southgate. I think he's he's got some class to him. I feel I felt terribly sorry for the three lads who failed to score their penalties. I just felt really sorry for them because it must be so tough in that situation and the mental load uh, must be very difficult. I've just realised at the beginning of this episode, I said it was episode 732, didn't I? Wrong. It's not. It's 733. You start to lose count after about 730 episodes, I think. So anyway, I was proud of the players, proud of the team, felt sorry for the guys who didn't score. But I don't feel very proud of the English fans and the racists who felt it necessary to abuse some members of the team. I mean, it's absolutely pathetic and ridiculous and stupid, including the fans who booed the team when they were taking the knee. Now, I know people will have strong feelings about footballers taking the knee, like kneeling down to protest racism. But I mean, ultimately, isn't it this? It's like you you can make statements about gesture politics and... Um, What's the other one? Virtue signalling and all that stuff. Okay, so gesture politics and virtue signalling are not great things. But racism is worse, don't you think? So I don't know why people get so upset about footballers making a, a statement against racism. What is wrong with that? I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of racism in football and hooliganism too. And English fans were really awful. They were booing during during other nations' um, national anthems. They were being racist to their own team, which is ridiculous. Uh, violent off the pitch and generally making England look very bad. Normally, England are quite a popular team in international tournaments, but I definitely noticed this year that England were not very popular. Not many non-English people were supporting them. And it seems that we've sort of become one of those teams that people don't like very much. And I wonder why. I, I don't think it's because of the the individuals in the team who all behaved very well. It's more to do with other things like the fans and probably things relating to Brexit. That England is no longer... Well, I don't know if it ever was, but England's not a very popular country at the moment. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section what you think. Uh, so I'm going away on holiday for about three weeks, right? Uh, my flat's going to be, my life's going to turn into chaos uh, when we move flat. Um, I don't know how this will affect the podcast, but if um, you are, <laughs> if you if you need to listen to me for whatever reason, obviously you've got the episode archive which you could listen to. Uh, but also, recently, I've been featured on lots of other people's podcasts. So the item on my list here is OPP, meaning other people's podcasts. So I've been invited onto other people's podcasts recently. Um, I don't know, like a lot more than normal. I, I usually get invited onto 
onto podcasts and stuff quite a lot but um for some reason the last few months have been even more than normal it seems that during the pandemic over the last 18 months it's lots of people started doing podcasts lots of new podcasts have arrived a lot of learning english ones as well and i guess since i've been doing this for 12 years i feel like almost like the grandfather of english language podcasting or something and so people invite me on um to interview me they invite me onto their podcast to interview me it's nice to be such a influential and um interesting person to be invited anyway you could listen to them you can find them and listen to them uh, most of these are just on these are just episodes of other people's podcasts that you can find wherever you get your podcasts right um not all of these are on youtube um you might need to just search your podcasting app so the first one i was on was the level up english podcast the Level Up English Podcast. Have you heard of it? The Level Up English Podcast. So just search for Level Up English Podcast with Michael Lavers. So I was in an episode of that. Um, by the way, you'll find links to these on the page for this episode. Um, and also you will find links to YouTube versions if they are available. So I was on the Level Up English Podcast with Michael Lavers and we talked about uh, the usual things that people ask me about, actually, when they interview me, it's just like, you know, why I started my podcast and uh, my experiences of learning French, you know, the all those sorts of things. And I sort of tell a few stories about embarrassing experiences of learning and speaking French. I was also on the Al Slagle English 2.0 podcast. Al Slagle, otherwise known as Al Sensei, um, who sort of disappeared for a few years. He was... Uh, quite a big podcaster in the sort of learning English uh, category a few years ago, Al Slagle, based in Japan, Al Sensei. He disappeared for a while, but he's back again. And he interviewed me for his podcast. So that's the Al Slagle English 2.0 podcast. Um, then there's Glass Onion on John Lennon. Now that's Anthony Rotuno's podcast. And he didn't actually feature me on his podcast. I'd love to be on it. Although I sort of feel I don't have that much to contribute because his podcast he's had so many guests with incredible levels of experience and knowledge so I don't know if I if I really deserve to be on it but um he did an episode a, a while ago which was sort of like question and answer answering questions from listeners and I sent in a question but anyway, generally speaking, you can listen to the Glass Onion on John Lennon podcast if you want um, more John Lennon chat with Anthony, including a, a brief appearance by me in the recent question and answer episode. Then there's the Stories of Language Learners podcast, okay? Stories of Language Learners podcast with uh, Charles from Brazil. And Charles is um, a learner of English and he's very passionate about learning English and he's decided to start doing his podcast and he's amazed by the doors that have been opened since he did that and he's spoken to some, he's interviewed lots of people on his podcast and stuff like that. He interviewed me, we talked about all sorts of different things, I can't remember all of it, but you could check out Stories of Language Learners podcast. Again, I will try and put links or maybe embedded media players on the page for this episode on my podcast uh, website also there was english with rod uh, rod or rodrigo is a an english teacher from brazil and he invited me onto his show as well i think that's not been published yet that episode but it's coming soon also coming up um also coming up i should be making an appearance on the clark and miller podcast that's another podcast by an English teacher from the UK, uh, Gabriel Clark. So he invited me onto his podcast. We spoke yesterday, so it's probably going to take him a week or two to get it done. But anyway, you can check out the Clark and Miller podcast. I should be on that soon. And I should be on English with Rob as well uh, at some point if he actually if we actually have managed to get it together um, so that I can be on his podcast so I should be on that as well. Okay, so there's lots of other stuff out there, obviously, lots of other people's podcasts that you could listen to. Um, there you go. Check out the page for this episode on my website. You'll find links to those things or maybe players for those episodes as well. Okay, we're nearly at the end of this. This is like the... 
I know this has been 35 minutes, but I feel like it's been the most uh, concise rambling episode I've ever done. But we're not done yet. There's there's more stuff for me to, to play you. So every now and then on the podcast, I play samples of my daughter speaking English. Um, again, long-term listeners will know because every now and then you'll hear little bits of her speaking. She's three and a half years old now. Okay. And so it's a sort of an ongoing not experiment, but an observation to see the development of, of her English. She's three and a half years old. Here's the base, Here are the basic facts about my daughter. So obviously, I live in France, in Paris, with my wife and my daughter. I'm English. My wife is French. Uh, she's from Paris. My daughter was born here in France. Um, she goes to school in French. All the kids around her and the teachers and stuff speak French. At home, we speak mostly English with some French. I always speak to my daughter in English and she speaks to me in a combination of English and French. My wife speaks some English and some French with, with my daughter and we have books that we read in English. Also, she watches like some cartoons in English and stuff. She's got a little radio with stories in it that are in English as well. She speaks to my grandparents, uh, my grandparents. She speaks to her grandparents, that's my parents, in English. The rest of her life is in French. Her language is developing, her, her, the two languages are, are developing at the same time. Often she mixes them up, so she will speak half French and half English sometimes. She's still doing that. We expect that to diverge in the future, that she'll more and more get a sense of what is English and what is French, and she'll be able to d divide them. But at the moment, they're still a little bit mixed up. Um, that's all you need to know, I suppose. But now let me play you a recording of my daughter and me. This is, um, how long is this? Hold on a second and I'll tell you. It's about 16 minutes long. So for the video viewers, I think what I'm gonna do is I might pop downstairs and make myself another coffee. So you'll be able to just look at the wall in my, in my room while I'm um, playing you this recording. So this is a recording of my daughter and me and we're just in her bedroom um, recently and um, I decided I would tell her a story so she's got lots of books lying around so we picked a book and I decided that I would read the story to her so you can also listen to me telling her a story which might be nice for you um, I know I'm going to be reading a kid's story but then they're, they're nice stories anyway and you can just listen to my daughter speaking English it's quite good fun really I hope that you enjoy this um, and when I've finished playing this to you I'll also play you a little musical collaboration that I did with my daughter as well, which you might enjoy, okay? So for this, it's about 15, 16 minutes long. I will just let you listen to my daughter and me talking. You can hear her English and you can enjoy the story which I read for her as well, okay? So here we go. I'm going to play the, um, play the audio of the story to you now while I get myself a coffee. Here you go. Press record. Now the battery might run out. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't want that to happen, do we? No. Don't want the battery to run out. No. Let's see. Anyway, so you're listening to Luke's English. Podcast. That's right. And today I am talking to my daughter, <laughs> who is in a musical mood. Um, how are you today? <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How about the weather? How's the weather today? Raining. Yeah, it is raining, isn't it? What do you think of the rain? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> do you like the rain? What's your favourite weather? Rain and sun. Rain and sun in the same day? Yes. Really? Why, why do you like the two in the same day? Storm, sun and, and rain. Storm, sun and rain. Yeah, because that makes things interesting, does it? Okay. Do you remember the last time we did this? When was no. the last time you were on my podcast? No. It was it was a year ago. And we were on holiday and I had my recorder. Mummy was having a having a shower and I decided to record you on holiday. Maybe you don't remember. I don't know if anyone else does either. Anyway, what's happening now? What's mummy doing? Sleeping. Yeah, she is sleeping. <laughs> Because she's quite tired. Now, darling, I want you to stay close to me, okay, to, for this recording. So, do you know, do you know who who are you talking to now? No. 
You don't know who you're talking to? No. Would you like me to tell you? Yes. Okay, so we are talking to the Lepsters. Can you say Lepsters? Lepsters. Yeah, who are, who are the Lepsters? Do you know? Lepsters. Say pa. That's a bit of French there. That you don't know. So I just say, I don't know. <laughs> you like singing, don't you? Just start randomly singing. How old are you now? Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. So I was saying the Lepsters, right? The Lepsters, they are my listeners. And they live all around the world. <gasps> yeah. All around the world. Yeah, the world's a big place. Lepsters, it's just a nickname, right? Lepsters is a nickname for my... For my listeners, what's your nickname? Uh, Nick. <laughs> now that's my name. <laughs> nickname is an, is what we call you sometimes. Sometimes we use your name. Sometimes we call you other things. What else do we call you? Bubble. Bubble. Yeah, that's your nickname, Bubble. <laughs> playing the re- playing the recorder again. Can you hold the microphone? Yes. So the way it works is you have to put your fingers over the holes. So this is a recorder, listeners, Lepsters, right? My daughter's got a recorder. Not this. This is this is a recorder too. This is an audio recorder. But the instrument, this, this is called a recorder as well. And you put, look, you put your thumb over that hole and you put your fingers over the other holes here. And when you lift different fingers, it makes different sounds. I can't play it. So it doesn't sound very good. All right, don't press the buttons. Here we go. I know, I know, I know. Now, all right, I'm going to read you a story now. Okay, let's do a story. Can you choose a? What's your favourite Little Miss book? Choose a Little Miss book, please. Now we're going to do a Little Miss. I know you do, but this one's in French, and I want us to do an English story, darling. I know. Yeah, well, this is Luke's English podcast. It's not. Luke's French podcast, I'm afraid. So instead, look, do you want a selection? Yes. Yes, a selection. Little Miss Splendid, Little Miss Hug, Little Miss Chatterbox, Little Miss Whoops, Little Miss Somersault, Little Miss Bossy, Little Miss Naughty, Little Miss Scary, uh, Little Miss Greedy, and Little Miss Shy. And Little Miss Someone. Little Miss Someone Else. Yes. Let's have one more, okay. Little, la, 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 la. This one, Little Miss Lucky, but I'm not sure this will work as well for the audio, but we'll see. So, which one would you like? I know which one I want. I know the one that's going to sound good on the podcast. I, I think Little Miss Shy is usually a good one for, uh, the, yes. for, the, for the audio. Should we do this one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I choose that one. You're going to choose that one. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Do you know why we do you know why we call you bubble? Sweetie. Sweetie, why do we call you bubble? I was going to say ba. You don't know. I'll tell you ah, Hold on. I'm going to tell you why and then I'll let you hold the microphone. Okay? We call you bubble because when you were in mummy's belly before you were born, I used to put my ear to mummy's belly and I used to speak to you. Right? And do you know what I used to hear? I could hear little bubbles, like the sound of little... It sounded like little bubbles inside mummy's tummy. And so I called you bubble even before you were born. And it could sound like a little bubble. And then when you were born, mm-hmm. you used to make little bubbles with your mouth. You used to kind of... Little bubbles would come out of your mouth. <laughs> so that's why you're called bubble. It's just a nickname. Okay, so now here's the thing. Uh, all right, listen, here are the rules. You can hold the microphone, mm-hmm. but you have to hold it here, like that, mm-hmm. so everyone can hear us, okay? So I don't want you to be distracted by the microphone. I want you to listen to the story, okay? All right, don't press any buttons. Just hold the microphone there. That's perfect. So everyone can hear, okay? So this is the story of Little Miss Shy. Are you shy? No. Sometimes a little bit, no? When you uh, meet new people, you're a little shy sometimes. Uh, the microphone. Uh, Not too far. Okay. So, here we go. You ready? Yeah. 
here's the story. I, I should say, first of all, this story is written by Roger Hargreaves, and it's, it's from the Little Miss Collection by Egmont Publishing. There's the Little Miss Collection, and then there's the Mr. Men Collection as well. This is from the Little Miss Collection. I want to Little Miss. This is a Little Miss. Here we go. Are you ready? So, Little Miss Shy... I get to put the microphone here. Little Miss Shy just couldn't help it. Being shy, that is. She was terribly, desperately shy. She was so shy, it hurt. Which is what they call painfully shy. Painfully shy. Yeah, yeah, hold it here. Hold it here, that's right. If at any time at all, anyone at all said anything at all to her... <coughs> She blushed like a beetroot. She lived all alone in a little house quite a long way from where you live. In fact, quite a long way from where anybody One, two, lives. Three, four, five. Yeah, five. Five little hills in front of her house, and the house is called Thimble Cottage. Is there a little One, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. Je ne sais pas les autres. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know the others. Yeah. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. This needs to be closer to me. Okay. I got it. All right. Don't press any buttons. All right. Thimble Cottage was the name of her house. A thimble is a little metal thing. Ooh. No, a thimble is a little metal thing that goes over your finger, uh, so that you don't when when you're sewing with a needle, so that the needle doesn't hurt your finger. You some people wear a little metal thing on their finger. It protects the finger from the needle. It's called a thimble. It's a nice little word. Anyway, Thimble Cottage is the name of Miss Little Miss Shy's home. So, Little Miss Shy was so shy. She just couldn't bring herself to leave her little cottage. Don't press the buttons. She never went shopping. She thought of walking into a... Sh the thought of walking into a shop and asking for something was absolutely terrifying. So she grew her own food in the garden of Thimble Cottage and lived a very quiet life. Very, very, very quiet indeed. Bang, bang, bang. Little Miss Shy, who was having breakfast in the kitchen of Thimble Cottage, dived under the table in terror. But it was only the postman knocking at the door. Anybody home? he called. Little Miss Shy, under the table, put her hands over her ears and shut her eyes. <laughs> because she was so shy. She must be out, thought the postman to himself, and pushed the letter he was carrying under the door and walked away. Little Miss Shy waited and waited and waited until the sound of his footsteps had died away and then she waited some more. In fact she spent most of that day under her kitchen table. It was dark by the time Little Miss Shy dared to come out. There it was on the doormat, the very first letter she'd had in the whole of her life. She opened it cautiously. It was from Mr. Funny. You are invited, said the letter, to a party, it went on. On Saturday, it said, at three o'clock, it added, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. A letter from Mr. Funny. Little Miss Shy was horrified. Oh, Mr. Funny. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Little Miss Shy was horrified. She looked at the letter again. I can't go, she thought. There'll be people there. People. In the whole wide world, there was absolutely nothing that frightened Little Miss Shy as much as the thought of people. She worried about it all night long. But the following morning, she made a decision. I'll have to go, she thought. It wouldn't be polite not to. But five minutes later, she changed her mind. And five minutes later, she changed her mind back again. 
But five minutes later, guess what happened? That's right, yeah, she changed her mind again. She didn't sleep that night at all. The following day was Friday. And that Friday, little Miss Shy changed her mind 144 times. That's how many five minutes there are in a day. She was going to the party. She wasn't going to the party. She was going to the party. She wasn't. She was. She wasn't. It was a long day. Can you turn the page? Okay. And that Friday night was even worse than Thursday night had been. She didn't sleep a wink, not even half a wink. Saturday morning came and went. Saturday lunchtime came and went. Little Miss Shy just couldn't eat a thing. One o'clock in the afternoon came and went. Two o'clock in the afternoon came and went. And then three o'clock, the party time, came and went. But poor little Miss Shy didn't. Meaning, she didn't go. She couldn't. She just sat there. A tear rolled down her cheek. Oh, I do wish I wasn't so shy. <laughs> she sobbed. Oh, it's a sad story, isn't it? Four o'clock came. There was a loud knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Little Miss Shy hid behind her chair. The door opened, and in walked Mr. Funny. I knew you wouldn't come, he laughed, looking at her behind the chair. So, he went on, I've come to take you. Little Miss Shy blushed and blushed and blushed. Come on, cried Mr. Funny, seizing her by the hand. You'll enjoy it once you're there. And he marched the blushing little lady off to his party. Everybody was there. Little Miss Shy didn't feel very well, but everybody talked to her and everybody was nice. And gradually, the longer the party lasted, bit by bit, little by little, eventually, guess what happened? She stopped blushing and actually started to enjoy herself. Told you so, laughed Mr. Funny. Little Miss Shy nodded and giggled. She was having the time of her life and only blushing a little bit. And do you know who she met at the party? No, you don't know? Mr. Quiet. Oh, oh. he's oh, blushing. He's blushing too, yeah. <laughs> and he says, he said, I used to be shy like you, he said. Little Miss Shy looked at him. I don't believe you, she giggled, and then she thought. Would you like to come to Thimble Cottage for tea tomorrow, she said. Mr Quiet looked at her. Me, he said, blushing like a beetroot. Tea, he said, blushing like two beetroots. Tomorrow, he said, blushing like a whole sack full of beetroots. And then he fainted. And that is the end of the story. Okay. And my recorder has not run out of batteries. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Normally this thing runs out of batteries really quickly. What did you think of the story, Little Miss Shy? Uh, Go on. Good, good, good. <laughs> Don't eat it. Don't eat the microphone. It's not an ice cream. Hey, what's your favourite food? What's your, no, don't eat me. What's your favourite food? Favourite food is scrambled daddy. <laughs> <laughs> scrambled daddy? Yes. Not scrambled eggs? No, it's scrambled daddy. Scrambled daddy? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Hi. No, 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 you can't eat me. It, no, no, don't eat me, please. You were trying to eat me last time we did one of these recordings. Uh -huh. what is the, what's all that about? Anyway, scrambled daddy, huh? Hmm. What does what does that come with? What's your favourite drink? What's your favourite drink? The thing we drink is Daddy's favourite drink at me. What? <laughs> hey, don't drink me. Get off. <laughs> Get off me. <laughs> Daddy milkshake, maybe. Yes. Yeah.
steady mistake. Ah. All right, all right, all right. That, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Hmm. Okay, well, I think that's good. I think that's... So what she was about to ask me there is like, what's your favourite drink? And I even had a joke lined up, but the battery ran out on the recorder just, be just before I could say it. So she was going to say, what's your favourite drink? And I wanted to say bubble tea. Ha ha ha. Okay, so that's my daughter and her English. Um, I thought that you might be interested to just to hear the way it's developing. She obviously speaks a lot of French too, but the English is definitely coming on and it's really amazing to be able to actually talk to her and have conversations with her. Okay, now I said before that I would like to play you a little musical collaboration. Now, I don't know if my daughter's musical or what, but she does spend quite a lot of time singing. So she will just, um, if you just leave her alone, she's just doing something, occupying herself, she'll suddenly start singing which is amazing, obviously. It's so cute. And she's pretty good. Sometimes it seems that she's got like a tune going on and her vocals are quite kind of, <laughs> they're quite soulful. I'm going to give you an example. This is when she was just playing, sitting with some toys and she started singing in French. And the lyrics are basically this. All around me, I have lots of flowers. All around me, I have lots of flowers. And it's lots of flowers, lots of flowers, lots of flowers. All around me, I have lots of flowers, which is quite beautiful, really. Um, here we go. This is her. Can we hear it? <laughs> which is like, all around me, I have flowers. <laughs> Now she sounds like uh, she could be like a, a soul diva singing over house music. <laughs> so she, <laughs> it's like a soul singer. Let me just play a little bit more. Flurbaku, flurbaku, flurbaku. That's flurbaku means lots of flowers. So I was so impressed by the vocal that she came out with that I thought, right, I've got to, um, I've got to try and make a piece of music for that. So I think this is what I came up with. Are you ready for this? So I, my wife recorded my daughter singing on her own. She sent the recording to me and I worked out what key she was singing in. I tried to work out what key is that? Is that C? Is it G? Is it D? What is it? And then based on that, I kind of came up with some music that would hopefully try and fit in with her singing. And it sort of pretty much worked. So I put some guitar, I put bass, and I put drums on. The usual things. And so this is the result. This is called Fleur Boku, and it's the collaboration between my daughter and me. <laughs>
you get the idea. Okay. So you get the idea, right? That was quite fun. That was quite a nice thing. I just felt like I wanted to play it to you just for a bit of fun because it's one of those episodes. Okay. Now, just before we end here, I'm going to try and sing a song for you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. We'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Now, what? Talking of we'll see. What can you see, camera wise? Because it would be good if you could see the kind of good bit of guitar, a bit of my face. That would be good so if you could uh, see this. So I'm going to sing a song by one of my favourites. I always sing songs by this person. It is Neil Neil Innes, who is just my. I guess it must be my favourite songwriter. <laughs> So I'm going to try and do this without being able to edit at all. I'm going to try and do this on the first go. One take only. So this is a song by Neil Innes and it's called Love Is Getting Deeper. And it's kind of the way he used to do it. He would sing it as if it was like a French song. With uh, a French vocalist who kind of sings in this sort of way. Uh, um, as a kind of comedy song. I can't do it like that, so I'm just going to try and do it normally. But the lyrics are all about sort of the everyday drudgery of married life and domestic life and how it can kind of be quite miserable. It can get on top of you if you're married to someone and you, you know, you don't have a lot of money and your daily existence is just repetitive and... Yeah, that's kind of what it's about. It sounds depressing, but there's a lot more to it than than, than that. There's love in there as well. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me try and do it. First take. I'm going to need to move my hand to drag down the uh, chords and lyrics here as well. I think. I think I do. Okay. We have no time for lovers' games of hide and seek or cat and mouse. I come home tired, you call me names, you work all week at keeping house. I understand the drudgery of what you do, but don't you think the office is the same for me? You ask me to unblock the sink. Life is getting shorter, nickel, dime and quarter. Talk is getting cheaper, love is getting deeper. I get to work under the sink, I bang my head, the spanner slips. I cut my hand and wish I had a drink, but curse instead the water drips. You nag at me, I raise my voice, the baby's toys are on the floor. You say be quiet, I have no choice, the slightest noise disturbs next door. Life is getting shorter. Nickel, diamond, quarter Talk is getting cheaper Love is getting deeper The kettle boils, the baby cries I pick him up, his little teeth are coming through I dry his eyes, you break a cup, and underneath the kitchen light Your pretty face is close to tears, and so my heart goes out to you As we embrace, love reappears to play its part Life is getting shorter, nickel, diamond, quarter 
talk is getting cheaper. Love is getting deeper. Okay, that was Love is Getting Deeper by Neil Innes. Oh, can you see me? Can you hear me? And that's pretty much the end of this rambling episode in which I told you that uh, things are going to be a bit complicated in Lepland as we move apartments over the next couple of months. That might disrupt the podcast. Also, I'm going away on holiday. Um, I'm in the middle of premium uh, series 20, uh, 31. So that's going to be coming as well over the next few weeks if I can find a way to do it. And that's it. I hope you have a lovely summer. You've got three episodes of the podcast already recorded, which will be released after this one uh, to keep you entertained. Hopefully, the disruption of my personal life is not going to affect things too much. But thank you so much for being a listener. Thank you for subscribing to my podcast on YouTube. And uh, have a lovely summer yourself, if, it, if indeed it is summer where you are. Uh, good luck to your country in the Olympic Games and all that stuff. And take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and I will speak to you again on the podcast soon. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.